friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Points. Happy Monday, it's Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three really good recipes. We have some comfort food, breakfast and lunch, and a fall inspired dessert. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not because I upload a meal prep every single Monday. Make sure you're checking out the description box down below where you will find my website that has all of my recipes, including the three that we're making today. You'll also find nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Highly recommend highly, highly recommend, and one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So let's jump in to this week's meal prep. breakfast this week, I am making a sausage hash brown breakfast casserole. This is going to be loaded with good things like sausage and hash browns and lots of cheese. So let me show you what's in the recipe. First, you're going to need some sausage. I'm using the Jimmy Dean fully cooked sausage crumbles. These are just super convenient, low calorie, low point. You'll need some milk. I'm going to go ahead and finish up this almond milk, minced garlic. The recipe calls for a Cajun seasoning, but that's a little too spicy for me. So I'm going to use the wood fired garlic from Kinder's. I really, really love this seasoning. You'll need some eggs, a bell pepper, an onion, light shredded cheese, and hash browns. cooking your sausage from raw form, you're going to want to go ahead and cook it in a skillet. Since I'm using the Jimmy Dean sausage crumbles, I'm just going to saute down my vegetables. While the veggies are cooking, we're going to add some minced garlic and some salt. I will of course link my gravity fed salt and pepper grinders down below. Best thing ever. While our veggies are cooking, into a medium-sized bowl, we're going to crack 10 eggs. Then we're going to add a quarter cup of almond milk, salt, and seasoning. And then whisk together. We're going to spray a baking dish with some nonstick cooking spray. The recipe calls for an eight by 10. I mean, you could really use anything. You could use a nine by nine, a six by 11. This is probably like a six by 12. So spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. And then on my food scale, I'm going to weigh out 20 ounces of hash browns. And we're going to sprinkle those right in the bottom of the baking dish. We're going to top our hash browns with our sauteed veggies. Then our package of sausage crumbles. Pour over your egg mixture. And then lastly, top it with one and a half cups of light shredded cheese. We're going to cover it with foil and it's going in a 375 degree oven for about 50 to 55 minutes. Our goal is to make sure those eggs are cooked completely through. We'll uncover it for about the last five to 10 minutes. All right, the breakfast bake is out of the oven. This looks so good, it smells amazing. You can see all that cheesy goodness, the eggs, the sausage. I'm so happy to have this for breakfast this week. I will go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. For my lunch this week, I am making instant pot chili. Now this could be a zero point lunch if you use 99% lean ground turkey in place of ground beef. But Troy will be eating this while I am on my trip to Hawaii. So he wanted ground beef. So my chili will have points, but take note, you can make this 
zero points, depending on your zero point foods, I guess. But let me show you what's in our chili. First, you're going to need a large can of diced tomatoes, chicken broth, two cans of kidney beans. Like I mentioned in my grocery haul, I couldn't find organic kidney beans, so I bought chili beans instead. You'll need a can of tomato sauce, a pound of 90, 6% ground beef, again, you could use lean ground chicken, 99% ground turkey, a bell pepper, an onion, celery, chili seasoning, and then a little teeny packet of sugar substitute. And I'm going to be making mine in my Instant Pot, but you could also do this in a slow cooker or on the stove top. First thing I'm going to do is dice up my onion, bell pepper, and celery. So for our chili, we're turning our Instant Pot to saute mode. I'm going to spray the bottom with some nonstick cooking spray. We're going to add in our diced onion, bell pepper, and celery. And we'll let that saute down for a few minutes until everything is nice and tender. Once your veggies are starting to soften, they're about three quarters of the way soft, we're going to slide those over to the side and add our pound of meat. Break that up with a spoon and allow the meat to cook until browned. Once your meat is browned, add one half of a cup of chicken broth and just scrape up any brown bits on the bottom of your Instant Pot. We're going to go ahead and turn it off of saute mode. And we're going to add in all of our beans, the chili seasoning mix, the can of diced tomatoes, and the recipe calls for eight ounces of tomato sauce, so I'm going to add half of the can. And lastly, our packet of sweetener. That's going to help with the acidity in the tomato sauce. We do not want to stir. We want our tomatoes and everything to sit on top during the cooking process. We're going to add our lid, set it to high for 12 minutes. Once your Instant Pot beeps and the 12 minutes is up, we're going to let it release naturally for 10 additional minutes. Once 10 minutes is up of natural release on your Instant Pot, go ahead and manually release the rest of the pressure. All right, and our chili is done. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Look at that. Beans, all the meat, the vegetables. It smells incredible. So I am going to go ahead and let it fully cool. I'll pop it into a storage container and we'll be able to have chili all week. I will go ahead and put points, calories, and macros here on the screen for you. sweet treat this week, I am making pumpkin snickerdoodles. I mean, I love snickerdoodles and you add pumpkin to it and that's a game changer. So let me show you what's in our recipe. First, you're going to need all purpose flour. You will need a brown sugar and sugar substitute. As always, I'm using Lakanto for both. I have the Lakanto Golden for brown sugar and Lakanto Granulated for regular sugar. I love Lakanto. It doesn't have a weird cooling effect or weird aftertaste and it's a clean, it's a nice, clean sugar substitute. So I will link Lakanto down below for you with 15% off. You're going to need some salt and don't forget these gravity fed grinders are linked as well. Baking soda, canned pumpkin, vanilla extract, pumpkin pie spice, cinnamon, and cloves. I do not have cloves, so I am substituting allspice and then you'll need one egg. To get started on our cookies, we're going to add one cup of brown sugar to a large bowl, one half of a cup of melted light butter, vanilla extract, and the yolk of one egg. And mix that all together really, really well. We're going to cover and chill our dough for at least two hours. Three hours later. I went ahead and lined a baking sheet with some parchment paper. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I added some of the Lakanto granulated and some cinnamon to a shallow bowl. Pulled out my cookie dough and we are going to start rolling out our snickerdoodles. Form it into a ball and then we're going to roll it in the cinnamon and sugar mixture and place it on the parchment lined baking sheet. Here 
here are the snickerdoodles. I ended up getting 15 out of the recipe. The recipe called for 30, but I wanted to make a little bit bigger cookies. These are super, super, super low point. So I'm going to just pat them down, throw them in a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. Snickerdoodles pumpkin style are out of the oven. My house smells like a bakery and it's making me really happy, giving me all the fall feels. It's very cinnamony in here. These look incredible. I'm going to allow them to cool. I'll package them up for the week and I'll be back to share points, calories, and macros. So my pumpkin snickerdoodles are all packaged up for the week. I just store them in a container. I put the parchment paper between the layers just so they don't stick together. These are huge, soft, fluffy cookies with that little bit of crispness that you want in a snickerdoodle. So I will go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen. And again, I made 15 cookies. If you made more or less, of course that information would change. But I'm excited for pumpkin snickerdoodles all week. this week's WW meal prep. I hope you are excited about the breakfast bake, chili, and pumpkin snickerdoodles. We have all the fall vibes happening here. Don't forget all these recipes are on my website, which is linked down in the description box, along with nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things, and of course, come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Heads up as well that there will not be a meal prep this next Monday because I will be in Hawaii, but if you check out the meal prep playlist here on my channel, you will have umpteen recipes and meal preps to keep you very busy while I'm on vacation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.